Hello everyone, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Today we're doing a short follow-up video on the Zoom Floppy. You might recall from our last video that the Zoom Floppy is that nifty USB device that lets us connect a 1541 or other floppy drive to our PC so we can back up our floppy disk. But did you know you can use the Zoom Floppy to connect VICE, the Commodore emulator, to real Commodore hardware? So, let's get started and see how this all works. Okay, I have VICE 3.1 opened up here. It seems like in VICE 3.2 they have removed the ability to use a real IEC device, which is rather disappointing. Although I will have to say, I have had the option to select a real IEC device mysteriously disappear from 3.1 and I've had to close it and reopen it and then it's there again so perhaps it's just some weird glitch where it's not showing up on my system. Uh, at any rate before we get started let's talk about uh, how to properly connect up your Zoom floppy. Once you have your floppy drive out and turned off and the AC cord plugged into it then connect your serial cable from the floppy drive to the Zoom floppy and after that connect the USB cable from the Zoom floppy to your PC. This will help keep all your equipment happy and help keep you from blowing up your precious Commodore equipment. Now back to Vice 3.1. In order to use our real floppy drive we're going to go to settings, peripheral settings, drive 8, use IEC device, use real IEC device. Now the IEC is just another way of saying the serial connection on the Commodore and then we click OK. One other setting that I like to have configured on VICE is the save settings on exit. This way when I close down VICE any changes I made are automatically saved for me. I don't have to remember to do that manually. You may like to have that the other way around but this is my choice. OK. Now that we have this done I am going to put a real floppy in my real floppy drive this is one I recently got with some equipment I purchased and we will load the directory on this guy I find when I'm using the vice emulator I try to type on a Commodore keyboard before realizing it's a PC keyboard so I'm always trying to hit shift 2 for quotes okay so this is the directory of what's on the top side of this flippy disk. Let's flip it over. Let's see what's on the back side. Hey, there's some stuff on the back side too. Let's see what's there. Break Street, Track and Field. I'm sure these are all legitimate copies, by the way. D and Doctor. Very interesting. Okay. I wonder what would happen if we would try load. Oops. Ack. Bonus points if you know where I picked up the term Ack. I'll give you a hint. Uh, it is from a cartoon from the 1980s and 90s. Hey, see, we're loading this game off of this legitimate copy from a Commodore 1541 floppy drive on our PC. I think that's pretty nifty for some reason. I'm not sure why. This should work as long as the software you're loading doesn't use any sort of built-in software-based fast loader because that will overwrite the standard IEC protocol and IEC is the only thing that our Zoom floppy knows how to speak. While this is taking 100 years to load, let's talk about where to get the proper version of VICE. 
if you go to vice.pokefinder.org you will find a list down toward the bottom of the page here's the top of the page go down toward the bottom and you can find some recent versions here so I don't remember which version of 3.1 I have but right here they are ah if you can hear the sound like I can the game is started let's bring that back up don't have a joystick connected, we won't be able to play this super awesome game from the 80s, but you get the point. We can go up here to and do a hard reset. And we're back at our start screen. Get our printer set up. This is a Commodore MPS 803 that I was lucky enough to find online in like new condition. Not sure if it was ever really used at all. of the plate roller and the fact we still got our cellophane on there I would say it is pretty new. I've done some printing already with this but I'm going to turn my sheet of paper over here and we will feed that in manually. cable. This also had a add-on tractor feed unit that went right here so you could use tractor feed paper. Okay, we've got that done. Now we can plug in our USB kit. Okay. Now we switch the printer on. Before trying to use the printer with Vice, I did connect it to a real C64 and tried that, which worked fine. Now, to configure printer output in Vice, we go back to Settings, Peripheral Settings, Printer 4, and we want to select Use IEC Device. Now, you would think that we could select Real IEC Device here, but that doesn't actually work. So as a workaround, we can select File System, tell it we want raw output, we want to output text, output to file number one, which means that file name, and the file name we're going to output to is viceprnt.out, and this is going to be saved in the directory that Vice is running from. So we click OK there. As a simple example, Let's do a program listing. Let's first enter a program here. We'll do, you know, like the classic 10 print of the world. 20, go to 10. Now, if we want to list that on the screen, we would do like that and we'd get our listing. If we want to send it to the printer, doing this from the standard Commodore Basic, is rather clunky. You know, we do the very easy to remember commands of open 3 comma 4, which says we want to open the IEC channel 4. OK. 
command 3, so we're sending everything to it. And now when we do a list, we see nothing on the screen because it just sent it to our virtual printer or, you know, in our case, output to the uh, file. To close this down, we say print number 3 and then close 3 comma 4. Wasn't that easy to remember. And the other weird glitch in Vice is that it's not actually going to save the file until we close Vice. Let's have a look at that here. Let me bring up the Vice directory. And you see right here where it says Vice PRNT out and it says it's zero K. Now if we go here and close Vice down, say so yes. All right, it goes to one K. So it actually writes it out then. Uh, this is just another oddity. Now to go from here to the actual printer is also kind of funky. So let's slide this over and get to a few other windows here. So the basic idea is that we would uh, open up a command window and type in these commands manually. So I haven't looked into exactly what all these do, but basically what this is doing is telling the OpenCBM software, which runs the Zoom floppy, to send this file out to device four. And when that's done, we want to unlisten and unlock it so it's available for other things. Typing all this in and having to add a CBM control to the path is kind of a pain. So what I did was create a little batch file that first resets the Zoom floppy or the IEC channel to be more specific. And this pause here, I'll ask you to press a, a key to keep going. And it's going to send the file out to the printer and ask you to press another key. So we're gonna wait for it to be done printing. And then it's going to uh, unlisten and unlock. So now all we have to do is to run this batch file from our vice folder and our printed output should be done. Okay, I'm going to cut in a view of the printer here. And if I can find my little batch file. What did I do with my little batch file? Oh, right there, right in front of my face. Okay, so now theoretically, if I run this batch file, the printer should print out our program listing. Oh, our batch file is out of our view here. So it says, tells us what it's doing, asks us to press a key. You could hear and see the printer reset. It printed the program listing and asked us to press the key again. Now the reason for adding those pauses and key presses in there, which you see on the batch file listing, is to give the, the printer time to actually reset before we actually send anything to it and then we want to make sure we're actually done printing before we disconnect the zoom floppy from the printer so that is all there is to printing it's kind of clunky but I will put this batch file uh, in a link below and you just need to drop that into your uh, zoom floppy folder and it should go ahead and work for you Well, that wraps it up for another episode. I hope you found it informative and perhaps a little enjoyable. I've just barely scratched the surface on what you can do with the Zoom Floppy and Vice. And I hope that little problem we had with not being able to use 3.2 with real IEC devices is fixed in a subsequent release. Oh, if you're not a subscriber already, please consider subscribing. Click on the subscribe button below as well as the little bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. I sure would appreciate it. Until next time, take care.